Today we're going to talk about multiplying fractions, what it means, how to visualize it, and how to model multiplying fractions. So when you're multiplying fractions, you're actually taking a part of an amount. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a Kit Kat. So I have this Kit Kat here, and I'm going to go ahead and share it. So I'm going to go ahead and give half to Lily. So I'm going to go ahead and break my Kit Kat, and there's half. So Lily gets half of this Kit Kat. Okay, so she takes that. It's gone. Now I have another half left. Diego is whining because Lily got half of the Kit Kat and he wants some too. So I said, okay, Diego, to be fair, I'm going to give you half of what I have left. So half of what I have left would be this much. And I give this much to Diego. Diego says, well, that's not fair. I said, sure it is. Lily got half and you got half. Why do you think that's not fair? Well, Lily got this half. She got half of the entire whole Kit Kat, which is this much. Diego did get half also, but he didn't get half of the entire candy bar. He got half of the half, right? So how much did Diego really get? So let's look at it in terms of an equation. Now, a lot of times when kids think that when I say you're taking half of something, they think of subtracting because usually when you take away, you're subtracting. But here, you're not subtracting half from the whole. You're taking half of a half. Okay, so we're, Diego got half of a half. So it is not half minus a half because if I had half left and I gave Diego half of what I had left and you subtracted, well, it ends up being what? Zero. When I gave Diego half of what I have left, did he did I have zero left over? No, when I gave Diego half of what I had left, I still had this much left for myself, right? So a half minus a half doesn't make sense in this case. So when we take a fraction of an amount, we are not subtracting, okay? So that, because that didn't make sense. If I subtracted, I would be left with zero and I was not left with zero. Half of a half is actually multiplication. If I take half of a half, it's a half times a half, which equals a fourth. Did Diego get a fourth of the Kit Kat? And you can see, yes, he did, okay? A fourth of the Kit Kat, well, remember, the Kit Kat was made up of four pieces. Lily got this half, and then when Diego got half of the half, he got this much, which you can see is actually a fourth of the entire candy bar. So Diego ended up getting a fourth of the entire candy bar. So that would be taking half of a half. Now let's look at it using brownie pans. So here, I have a brownie, half of it's gone, it's eaten. So I have half left, okay? If I wanted to give my eighth period class two thirds of what's left here, I'm finding out what two thirds of a half is, right? Now, if I give them two thirds of what's left, did they really get two thirds of the entire pan? No, they did not, because two thirds of the entire pan would look like this. That's how much two thirds of the entire pan would be, right? If they only get two thirds of this half right here, I would have to cut this half into two thirds, like this, right? And they would get this amount right here, okay? These two pieces right there, all right? Now, is that really two thirds of the whole pan? No, it's actually two thirds of a half. So how much did they really get, right? It was kind of like Diego's candy bar. He got half of a half. He did not really get half of the entire candy bar. He got a fourth. So if I gave these two thirds, two thirds of the half of my brownie to eighth period, how much did they really get? Well. Let's think about this. They got these two pieces. How many of those pieces would make up the entire pan? These are gone, right? But if they were there, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces make up this whole brownie pan. And they got these two pieces. So two thirds of a half, they really got two sixths of the entire brownie pan. So two pieces out of six, which simplifies to one third. So really they ended up getting one third of the entire brownie pan if they were to get two thirds of the half. Let's look at another brownie pan. So in this brownie pan, I have 
three fourths left over, right? Let's say that I wanted to give one third of the three fourths away. Okay, so let's think about this a third of three fourths. If I want to figure out how much a third of three fourths is, so let's say we're at a party, there's three fourths left, right? And Carson eats a third of what's left in the brownie pan. So how much did he really eat? He didn't really eat a third of the entire brownie pan. He ate a third of the three-fourths that's left over. So now that it's cut this way into three-fourths, I actually have to cut my thirds a different direction. Okay, so Carson is going to eat a third of what's left over. So that's one-third, two-thirds, and three-thirds. So do you see my thirds? And he ate a third of what was left, which means Carson would have eaten these three pieces right there. So that would be what Carson ate. Well, how much did he really eat of the entire pan? So if he ate a third of three-fourths, he ate, really ate these three pieces. And that would be three out of, well, if these pieces were not missing, I would have a total of 12 pieces. So he really ate three out of... 12, which simplifies to one fourth. Okay, so when we when we take a part of any amount, you're actually multiplying fractions. So let's move the brownies and let's look at pictures. Okay. Now, here, if we want to take one third of two thirds, so there's two thirds of the brownie pan left, and we are going to take one third of it. Okay, so here's the two-thirds that's left. If we want to take one-third, okay, this vertical line is already for the two-thirds. So if I wanted to break it into one-third, thirds, I would have to break it horizontally like this here, okay? So do you see here's one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. So here's the two-thirds that's left. If I want to take a third of what I have left, I would take this whole amount right there, right? Now, if I take a third of two-thirds, Kids think, oh, I'm subtracting because I'm taking it away, but that really doesn't work because here, if you had a whole brownie pan, you took a third away, we are left with two thirds, right? If you subtract a third from that, you end up with one third. Well, here, do you end up eating one third? So if I took a third of two thirds, does it, does it leave me with one third? No, I'm left with these four pieces. So the subtraction does not work here. So when you take a part of an amount, you are not subtracting. You are actually multiplying, okay? So you can see that if I take one third of two thirds, these are the two pieces I end up eating. Well, I ate two out of a total of, well, if these pieces were here, there would be a total of nine pieces. So I actually ended up eating two ninths of the brownie pan. So taking a third of the two thirds, ended up equaling two ninths. What is a third of two thirds? Remember, when you take a part of an amount, you're actually multiplying. So one third times two thirds, does it equal two ninths? One times two is two, and three times three is nine. So as you can see, it does equal two ninths. So when you take a part of an amount, you are multiplying, okay? Now, if I changed it up and I said, okay, there was two thirds left and you eat a third of the entire pan, then yes, if there's two thirds left and you eat another third of the entire pan, then you would end up eating this whole amount and then you would have one third left over. So in that case, that is subtraction, okay? If you take two thirds and you take another one third from the entire pan, so not taking a third of two thirds, but taking a third of the entire pan, then you would subtract. So there is a difference here. Here we took a third of two thirds. Here we took a third of the entire pan. So it's not the same, okay? So this one's subtracting. And when you take a part of a, an amount, it's multiplication, all right? Let's do one more example. Let's say we have a brownie pan here. And this time we have one third left. So there's only this much of the brownie left, okay? If 
someone came along and ate one fourth of that, we would try to figure out what one fourth of the one third would be. If we took If we took a fourth of a third, we would take this third, we'd have to break it into four equal pieces, right? And taking a fourth of it would be that much right there. How much is that of the entire brownie pan? Well, if you imagine that these pieces were not missing, you would end up have, having eaten one out of 12 pieces. Taking a fourth of a third is the same thing as one fourth times one third. A fourth times one third is equal to one twelfth, and that's what the picture shows here.